And good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's exciting installment of Drink with Rick, the live stream where we taste, uh, we open up and taste and review uh, a bottle of wine I've never tried before, or allegedly never tried before. <laughs> because sometimes I have tasted a few of them uh, in in the store, and I liked them, so I open one up when I got home and try it out for real and see if it's every bit as good as the tasting was. And, you know, the thing is about wine tastings, um, like in a store somewhere, it seems like sometimes it always seems to taste better in the store than when you get at home. Not always, but oftentimes you'll go to the supermarket and they'll open up a bottle of wine and then you'll buy one and you'll bring it home and it's like, man, it doesn't seem as good as it was in the store. Maybe it's psychological, maybe it's just me, but I like to open the bottle up, uh, up and, and try it out for real and give it a really good taste test, more than just the little bit that they give you in the little tiny glass in the supermarket. Um, I like to go ahead and fill up the glass and uh, really try it. So here we are. Uh, tonight we're going to taste the, uh, this is a Jeff Runquist wine. This is... <clears throat> This is a 1448, and I actually have um, I have I have some images of it. There we go. <clears throat> this is a 2016 1448, 2016 vintage, and um, this is a very interesting wine. This is a California red table wine, and let's see, I've got a shot from the. Uh, from the other side here. There we go. Nope, that's not it. There, there we go. <clears throat> this is a very interesting wine. Um, I'll read this since you can't really see it from the uh, very well from this shot, but it says um, 1448, the altitude of our small family winery in the foothills of California, Sierra Nevada Mountains. Uh, an assembly of wines from throughout California that delivers fruit-forward flavors with a rich texture sure to delight every palate. And this is a Jeff Runquist wine. 13.8% alcohol by volume. And uh, as I've mentioned so many times, on the wine stream that uh, that's not always accurate sometimes it's uh it's considerably more than that and i think some of it has to do with the way it's all calculated but uh, oftentimes it's it's more than than what they say it is this does have a nice uh, deep pit to it which means that it is meant to stay on the shelf for a little while and uh, you, you can you can keep it for, for a while. Uh, let's see who's in the chat with us first before we get started. Rob's in the chat with us. Hi, Rob. Good to see you. And, you know, um, tonight is also a special celebration. We're going to open this wine. And we're going to uh, celebrate my sister Gina's birthday. Tonight is, uh, and I have been promoting this in the last few wine streams, but tonight... Uh, it just happens to be my sister Gina's birthday. Uh, I'm not going to tell her age. She's younger than I am, um, fortunately for her, because <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't think anybody wants to be as old as I am right now. I, I'm, I wanted to stop my age uh, progression uh, a few years ago, but there's no stopping life. You know, there's no, just no stopping. That sort of thing. It's just part of life. But uh, anyway, uh, she, her birthday is on the 25th of May. And she was born a couple of years after I was. She, so she is my younger sister. There were six of us in our family. Six uh, kids. I had five siblings. One who, who passed away uh, in 2006. But um, there are um, five of us now. But um, they're, they're all younger than me. I was, I'm, I'm the eldest. And um, Gina is second. She's, she's second uh, uh, down the line from me. Uh, 
An interesting couple of interesting stories about that uh, when we were growing up, and but we'll share that later on. Hopefully, Gina will be joining us uh, this evening. I know that she's uh, been pretty busy uh, working on some other things. She's, she's, she has some other things going on, but uh, hopefully she'll be able to join us this evening and celebrate her birthday right along with us. But you know what? If she's not here, that's okay too, because uh, we're just here to have a good time and relax, kick back, and and uh, and, j and just enjoy the moment on a Saturday night. Everybody just drinking together and, and uh, spending some time together. I am going to open this bottle of wine momentarily. Now, normally, what I would do is I would have my trusty uh, corker, uh, uncorker, I should say, and I love this thing. It's amazing. But uh, tonight, this bottle of wine happens to be um, a twist cap. Now, you know, there... There, there is some, I guess I should say, there are those who, um, who, who don't really care much for the twist cap. And they think, well, that's, that, that signifies a cheap bottle of wine. That's not true. Uh, there are some fairly expensive uh, wines that, that use this kind of cap as well. And uh, there, you know, I mean, traditional, it's tradition to have a cork in there and there's a lot to be said for the cork but the you know the the screw on cap uh, apparently uh, there is something to be said for that as well there are arguments for that so uh, you know as long as the wine is good as, as long as it's a good bottle of wine it's really not that important at the end of the day um, and I'll get more into that later as, as we go on and as I uh, drink down into the bottle, uh, into the bottle, I haven't had any yet. <laughs> so, and what we're having along with it tonight, uh, actually this, this wine is supposed to go good with, with steak, but uh, I don't have steak here. But what I do have is I do have some crackers to keep my palate clear a little bit, uh, some turkey pepperoni, as I like turkey pepperoni, and some cheese and this cheese is just kind of a regular sargento brand medium cheddar because uh that that was just whatever i pulled out of the fridge when i came up here and it's just really to supplement uh, the wine a little bit well, we're going to go ahead and, and try out this wine before i get started i, w I wanted to say that uh, i went down to wine store our local wine store here in charlotte and uh, that's where I found this bottle, uh, bottle. They were doing a wine tasting. Now, fortunately, <clears throat> they give you a little bit more wine in the glass than, than they do at the supermarket usually. So you get a little bit better idea of what the wine tastes like. I will have to say that I, I was impressed with what I experienced there with the slight tasting. And I'm really eager to open this up and try it out for real to see what it really tastes like as you get down into the into the bottle. This wine is a little different uh, as a red blend because it's it's sort of a, a mishmash from what I understand from reading up on it. It's a little bit of a mishmash of of all the leftover wines that they had that that they brewed uh, now uh, brew that they um, a bottle and. Uh, I have beer on my mind uh, for some reason, but they have they, they take a combination and you know and I've said but many times before I'm not one I, I don't automatically uh, subscribe to red blends. There are a few that I do like. There are many many red blends that I don't like. It depends on the blend. Uh, some some uh, some of the wineries they they do it right they they have just the right blend and then others they just kind of throw stuff together and it's it, it's it's awful and then there's everything in between but this one uh kind of caught my fancy because it was it's an interesting blend it, it, it's it has some complex um it has some complex aromas uh in it from from what i tasted and it's um it's a 43% p 
petite uh, a, a, a petite uh, Verdot, a 35% petite Syrah. Uh, I think there's an, there's a little bit of Zinfandel in it, and um, I think there are a couple of other wines in there too, including a little bit of a Tempranillo and a, and a Malbec. Uh, so uh, that that's it's a very interesting combination. So we're going to try this out. Without further ado, we're going to go ahead and and try this out now and then we'll talk a little bit more about it as we uh, as we go along so without further ado that was easy wasn't it that's one of the nice things about this it's you know some wines when you try to get them uncorked like last week uh, last week on the wine stream I uncorked the uh, Le Mistral wine and it it had uh, it, it didn't have uh, the, the standard seal, dock stamp, that sort of thing on it. What it had on it was uh, wax, a wax seal. And I still have the bits of wax from where I was trying to peel that off with my thumbs last week. And then I found out <laughs> that you didn't have to do that. You could just pop the, the, the uh, corkscrew in and it just comes right out which actually is a lot easier than what I was doing. So if you, if you want to go, if you want a little laugh, you can go back and look at last week's wine stream where I opened that up because it took me a couple of minutes uh, uh, going through it with my thumb. But uh, anyway, this is a lot easier than that. It's, uh, like I said, there, there are different schools of thought on, on these, but uh, I'm okay with it. I, I wasn't at first, but I'm okay with it now. And we're going to pour this into my Cooper's Hawk Winery and Restaurant glass. This is a genuine crystal glass from Cooper's Hawk Winery. And we're going to give it a little pour here. And I'm going to just put a little bit in the glass for starters. And um, swirl it around, give it a good swirl. And while I'm doing that, Bill has joined us in the chat. Hi, Bill. Good to see you. Say hi. I uh, hope you're drinking something, and if you're not, uh, feel free to do so and, and join us. I'm giving this a good swirl, and I'm going to hold it up to the lights. I don't know if you can see it with everything behind me, just uh, what we've got here for legs, but um, let's see if we get some tears out of this. And uh, it's, they're coming. It takes a minute or so. Now, as you know, the warmer the wine is and sometimes you can do that by holding the glass in your hands and give it a a good swirl around the the better you the the better effect you get with with the uh tears i learned this from a uh from another wine uh connoisseur and it looks like uh yeah it has some it has some legs to it. it does it's not too bad and uh Doing good taste. Oh yeah, this is this is as I said before. This is kind of a complex wine, and I can smell it in the. Uh, I can smell it in the in the uh, uh, just the aroma. I can smell. <clears throat> excuse me. I can get a little uh, blackberry. Raspberry. Mm. Oh, yeah. A little bit of vanilla. And there are a few fruits in here. There are a few fruits. Just a little oaky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's smooth. It is it is definitely it's a full bodied wine. It's it has very nice color to it. It really does. It's it's somewhat dark, but it has a nice color to it. It is full bodied. And um, it is, let me see, uh, let me look up some information on the price on this, because I paid about $15 for this 
I think it was $14.99 that I paid for this bottle at Wine Store. And I think it's going on the internet from between $15 and $20 a bottle. That sounds about right. So it's not too bad. <clears throat> so that's 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 actually, I think it's worth the, the money just for that. I, I really like the, I'm going to pour some more of this. Uh, you know, I'm going to pour it since we've already done the, done the tears we uh i'll go ahead and let's spill a little bit there um <clears throat> mm -hmm. oh yeah i like this it's a nice wine um it is as i was saying it is full-bodied it's it, i know it tastes a little tastes a little cherry in there too and i love cherry a little bit of like black cherry in there. Anyway, this is um, where was it going with this? Oh, uh, it uh, yeah, it says fifteen dollars a bottle, and um, in some places I've seen it about twenty dollars, not more than that. I think Total Wine has it. I think uh, I haven't seen it there. But I think I've seen it online at Total Wine. So, <clears throat> so if you have a Total Wine in your area, because I know that Wine Store is uh, pretty much in this in this area in the in the Charlotte, uh, North Carolina area. And if, but you know what I found out? If you don't have, if if you're not in the area and you don't have access to a wine store, you can actually order it online. They have. Let me get their website up here. Uh, I don't have it up here in the. And uh, on the system, but um, let's see the the it would be winestore-online.com. That's the URL winestore-online.com. They will ship to certain states, and uh, I know this because I found this out this past week. Because uh, well, I I don't want to spoil the surprise. I don't want to spoil the surprise. It is my sister's birthday, by the way, and she probably has a good idea already what I sent her for her birthday. Uh, it was supposed to arrive yesterday, and uh, they assured me that it would because uh, I sent it uh, FedEx, uh, FedEx ground, uh, and they were, and I wasn't sure that they would because she's all the way on the west coast and I'm here on the east coast, and I, I, I had my doubts about that. I was thinking, you know, I know shipping, so. I've, I've done I've done a bit of it myself in the past, not for wine, but uh, they said that it would probably get there by Friday, so I said, okay, I'll go ahead and ship it. Um, last, uh, I don't think she got it in time, but uh, I hope she did, if she did. Anyway, the... Uh, Thing is, they do they do ship to some states, not all states, because there are some states that do not allow you to transport or ship wine, um, you know, uh, across the state or, or between states. So there there are some restrictions on that. But if you're in a state that allows um, uh, wine to be shipped to you, allows you to order wine online and have it shipped to you. Then, then you're good. They should be able to get it to you, and um, and they're pretty good. The prices are, are are great. The prices are excellent, and um, their shipping's actually pretty reasonable. I was surprised. I, I thought it would cost more to ship, um, you know, what I shipped, but uh, it was actually very very reasonable. I, I was impressed, and. Here's to to the folks at the wine store who really. That's the other thing. They really took care of me. They they took care of me, and then they they called me right back and made sure everything was in place. They were very very good. And this is not a. Don't get me wrong. This is not a a. Um, a, a commercial for wine store. Uh, I'm just saying that that's where I like to go, and uh, I've been really impressed. They've been really, really Matt and, and the and the staff there have been really, really good to me, and I really appreciate that. Here's to you guys at uh, Wine Store. Oh yeah, that's good. I'm gonna have some more of this, and you know what? 
you may want to stick around for this whole thing because I generally don't I try I've done it twice I generally don't uh, go through a whole bottle but we might be surprised this wine is so good I might uh, it might it could just happen tonight mm. I really like this one. I should have uh, sent her that. But I didn't know about it at the time, really. Anyway, so I hope uh, everyone had a great week. Hope everyone's having a great uh, Memorial Day weekend. I want to say that that this is uh, this is really kind of a, a, um, a somber, not celebration, but observance of, of our... Um, uh, armed forces of the people that that served our country and and died for our country you know memorial day, i mean everybody's going to be going out and having cookouts yeah we're going to do that too we're going to we're going to have a cookout and we're going to you know party a little bit and everybody has already started uh, some of our neighbors have already started um but this is really a time for reflection and to really um look back and 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 show our appreciation uh, for those who died for our country, those who who made the ultimate sacrifice, as they say, um, for the freedoms that we enjoy uh, here in this great country. And um, I myself, I, I, I never served in the armed forces. My dad did. My dad served in the Navy uh, for, he did a tour, uh, a, uh, he did uh, a couple of years in the Navy. And um, interesting story about my dad because he, um, you know, even though it was it was peacetime when he was serving, um, though he was witness to a, a, an accident there that happened, a major accident uh, um, at the time that, that, uh, that really affected him um, uh, on the ship that he was on. And... Uh, you know, even in peacetime, it's, it's, you just, you just never know things happen. And, you know, these people who, who, uh, went into the military and, and gave the ultimate sacrifice, um, uh, to, uh, to help protect our country and to, you know, to, uh, help preserve our, our way of life. I think they they've more than earned they've more than earned um, this day, you know, a Memorial Day. This this the day coming up uh, on Monday. So I would say to everyone that um, you know enjoy. You definitely want to enjoy what you have. Um, it was hard earned. It was it was hard earned by those who cannot share it with us now we're no longer here to share it and to enjoy it as well but and we can uh, enjoy it for them in their honor but not forget that this day was really meant for them um, to sit back and reflect and to honor them and to to thank them for uh, what they gave and what they sacrificed for our country so here's to all of our, um, all of those uh, in our armed forces who did make the ultimate sacrifice, and here's also to those who are serving now, wherever they are, uh, around the world, and here's to all of those who have served and who are back home, uh, the vets, who um, are in, who who definitely need and, and deserve and have earned. Um, the right to be to to be taken care of as they as they should, um, you know. I mean, with with some of them come back not whole. Some of them come back maybe um, whole in body, but not in mind or spirit. And we have to remember them as well, and to take care of them. Remember that that uh, they took care of us. They served for us, and they took care of us, and now it's time to take care of them. So here's to 
all of you serving the armed forces and all of your uh, the vets and especially to all of our service men and women who who made that sacrifice and who could not be with us now I hope everyone has a great Memorial Day. And of course, as I mentioned before, it is my uh, sister's birthday. And I was going to, I wanted to throw up some pictures uh, of us growing up and that sort of thing, but I wasn't sure how she was going to feel about this because I know it all goes public. And I don't know how public she wants to, to make all of her baby pictures and that sort of thing. So I, 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 sort of uh, kept that low key and decided not to not to do that and uh, if she says it's okay then maybe in the future when I'll I'll put them all up there but but uh, uh, I think for now it's probably prudent not to go through that and and, and just kind of uh, say happy birthday uh, to my sister Gina and once again uh, here is to you Gina uh, wherever you are and I hope you can join us later. But if you can't, even so, maybe you can watch afterwards. Uh, a toast to you. Happy birthday to my sister. And you know what? I could sing the happy birthday song. Well, you know, I haven't done the toast. Mm. To Gina. Um, we could do the happy birthday song. It's concerning the fact that it is public domain. But uh, I don't think, I, I think everybody watching the stream now will turn it off quickly if I start singing. So I'm not going to do that. I'll spare you that, that torture and not sing. But uh, what I will do instead is have some more wine. Now, once again, as I mentioned, uh, I have some, I have a few treats here for me. I have this cheddar cheese. I don't know that goes good with cheddar, but... Just to clear the palate. Hmm. It's all right. Interesting. Depends on the cheese. Now that's cheddar. That's a, uh, a medium cheddar, so it's okay. I wouldn't. There are some cheeses I would not pair this with. I don't know if it would go good with a, um, you know, a cheese like a. Gruyere or something like that. Gruyere, um, you know, it might go okay with a with a mozzarella or a provolone or, or something, or maybe a maybe a Monterey Jack or something. But I think this definitely goes good with steak. In fact, I or what I really should do is cork this bottle right now and save the rest of it for uh, Monday. Well, I'll be doing some grilling, some serious grilling, but. Uh, it's it's a good pass. I only got one bottle of this, but it's okay. I have I have more wine in the back that I have not opened. And as a matter of fact, we were going to take. I was going to open this bottle of Frico wine. This is an Italian wine back here, and I think I've I have a I have an image of this. Where is it here? It is. Ah, I have one right here. No, that's not it. That's a photo of a ferret. Um, I'm not going to show that. I showed that last week. I'm not going to show that again this week. There we go. There's the Frico wine. This is a 2016 um, wine. Uh, it's Italian wine from Italy. <laughs> and I've been wanting to open this one up because I've heard some good things about it and I took a little tiny taste of it and I thought well this is pretty interesting I think I'll I think I'll get this and I've been really I've really been wanting to open it but I've been wanting to save it for the the right time the right wine stream to do that and uh, it seems like every time every time I I'm getting ready to say oh you know what I think I'll open this model Something else comes along, like like this 1448. Uh, when I, when this bottle came, out, in fact, I was thinking about opening that one up tonight, and then when I went down to the wine store and saw and and tried this wine, 
I said, uh, no, I think I have to, I have to use, do this one instead. This, the, this, we've got to do this one first. That one can wait a little bit. Uh, interesting story about the name Frico. One of the things that caught my eye on it, <laughs> that caught my eye with the, with the name, it instantly reminded me, it took me back to my high school days which is interesting because when I was in uh, middle school, I went to, I went to um, uh, a high school in Oviedo, Oviedo High. And we actually, uh, before high school, I think it was our last year of, of um, middle school to high school, I think I was there too. And uh, we were on double sessions with them because they were building a new school. They were building Lake Howell High School at the time, which is where I went, where I graduated from in, in 1978, which dates me, doesn't it? That, that tells you how old I am. Um, so when I was in, in middle school to high school, I was kind of a geeky kid. I was really a geeky kid. So that I, uh, and I wore these really big geeky glasses. And, you know, I got made fun of that because back then it wasn't cool. Being a, a nerd, I was a nerd when being a nerd wasn't cool uh, at all. You know, the whole pencil neck geek thing and all that sort of thing. You know, uh, uh, the Freddie Blassie song, if you've ever heard it. And, um, Bill, you've probably heard it. If you're still there in the chat, you you probably remember the Freddie Blassie tune, um, pencil neck geek. But I was... I was a geeky guy, and uh, yeah, I got I got made fun of a lot in in, in early days of, of uh, you know my middle school, my my early days of high school, and uh, I had a reputation. They they called me uh, uh, Frico. <laughs> that was my nickname, Frico. Which I hated. I, I really despised that. I, I really hated it because it was the tone in which it was taken. It was very, very uh, condescending. Anyway, uh, I outgrew that. I, I outgrew that. I showed them. But tell me, <laughs> no. I uh, my last year of uh, high school, we we uh, um, we we uh, shined. We we did some things. We did some products uh, projects that the that uh, our classmates took notice of and said, hey, you know, we, we, and they developed a little more respect for us for, for some of the things that we were able to accomplish in school. Positive stuff. And uh, by the time I graduated, uh, I couldn't say I was popular, but, uh, but I had a much better reputation. Uh, I wasn't known for being Frico anymore. Um, for a while, they called me Sequoia, and they shortened it to Tree. Uh, that's a, another long story. But uh, I, yeah, you know, I mean, it hurt a bit. But but yeah, yeah, I grew up. But by the last year of high school, I was over it, and and it was all cool. And and the thing that I I realized, and that's something that that you know, I know most everyone here should be of legal drinking age anyway. But it's something to note that, and this is something that I've always told my kids, uh, even though they never really, they didn't really experience that problem for the most part that I had uh, with with being ostracized so much when I was a kid. Um, I told them that that the funny thing about high school is that it seems like you know when you're when you're going through that. It seems like that's the most important thing in the world, how you look to your peers and being liked by your peers. And, and if you're being looked down upon by your, your peers, that peer pressure, when you're that age, that's the most important thing in the world. That is your world. And you think that's, that's going to be forever. But it's not. The, the truth is that the moment, the moment that you graduate, the moment that you throw that cap in the air, you've graduated, and you walk off the school grounds, nobody cares anymore. It's, it's all over. It's, it's done. There's no more, you know, they've moved on. Everybody's moved on. Everybody forgets all that stuff. It's, 
it's not none of it's important anymore. So if you ever feel like in your school and you feel bullied or you feel uh, ostracized, you feel like you're not popular or anything like that, it's it's not important. It's not. It seems important because you're right there in the middle of everything with all of your peers and everybody who knows you. But you sort of have to look ahead of that. Yeah, you sort of have to look ahead and and realize that that there's more to life than that and that's just that's just sort of an incubation place an incubation period where you just sort of you know you're just sort of uh uh in that moment it's it's not for the rest of your life and as soon as you graduate from school and move on none of that stuff that happen in school is going to matter anymore. None of that. I mean, people are going to forget what, how nerdy you were. They're going to forget whatever you know. If 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 you were um, the 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 how should I put this? <laughs> and or it's it's hard to to say things like say things nowadays that that aren't going to be perceived the wrong way. So I've got to be careful what I say. You know, if if you are somebody who was the wallflower, somebody who was not the most attractive person in school, or was not the jock, who was not the be, you know the, the 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 popular person in school. All that stuff becomes meaningless the the moment that you leave high school. It doesn't matter anymore. Nobody cares. That whole culture is is gone forever. It's just it's it's nonsense. It was nonsense to begin with, but because you were there in the thick of it, it seemed so real. I don't know if I, if 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 any of that really makes any sense, but I, I um, the fact is is that. I look back on my high school days and and I think of how silly the whole thing was, how silly all of it was. And I don't harbor any ill will towards anybody who you know, made fun of me or or put me down or ostracized. I, I don't care. I really don't care because it, it's not important. None of that means anything. It it really doesn't. Um so and, and you know what there are people in high school that I I wasn't particularly friends with then or that gave me a hard time then that have come back later and said, hey, um, Rick, uh, you know, we're, we're friends now. You know, it's it, it's, it's fine. We're, we're friends now. And, and you know, we, we uh, uh, talk back and forth. We're friends on Facebook, that kind of thing. And, and it's all good. It's all good. I mean, none of that stuff way back then matters. So if you're going through that sort of thing now, peer pressure, you know, through high school or, or grade school, whatever it is, I'm talking to the kids that they're awake and I don't, I don't hopefully they're, they're all in bed. <laughs> but something to tell your kids, it's not important. It really isn't. It's, it's all going to pass. And um, <clears throat> life goes on. You become adults. Everybody grows up more or less, and, um, uh, you know, and, and gets over it. So, anyway, uh, I went on a rant there, didn't I? Well, there's a reason I was I was bringing that up. I was going somewhere with that. And uh, it's because my sister, Gina, whose birthday it is, and I'm going to talk a little bit about her and I hope she doesn't mind, but it's all good. It's all good stuff because I love my sister and she's very smart. She's very bright. She's talented. Um, she has um, accomplished a lot with her life, and I followed. I've followed some of that, and um, even though we're we're a, pretty much um, a whole continent apart, she's on the west coast. I'm on the east coast. But she has has done a lot uh, with with her life and, and a lot of good things, and I'm proud of her. I'm I'm quite proud of of where she she is. But um, and there's no but because I am. <laughs> Let me throw this up again, Gina. If you're joining us, uh, or if you're joining us later, happy birthday. Here's one more to you. 
And this is really kind of a celebration of Gina. And the reason I brought up what I brought up before about grade school is because I had um, a pretty tough time when I was a kid. And uh, being the eldest, I when I was, oh, I don't know, eight or nine years old, <clears throat> I don't really remember because a lot of my earlier years are just kind of a blur now anyway. You get older, it's a, a lot of stuff becomes sort of a blur. There's a lot of stuff, <clears throat> there's a lot of stuff people remind me of that, that uh, I'm like, oh, I don't remember that. <laughs> I don't remember any of that. Um, but, you know, I was kind of a naive kid back then, too. I mean, I didn't know a lot. I just, I was doing with it. I didn't know uh, really a whole lot about a life, probably. Uh, you know, I, I walked around kind of in my own little world, I guess, in a way. But when I was uh, a kid and I started having trouble <clears throat> with my eyesight, because I am very nearsighted, you can tell my glasses are pretty thick, I had, um, uh, I, uh, nobody really realized at first just how bad my eyesight was. And I really didn't understand what was going on. I was just going, you know, to school every day. And, and I, I just just understood that was kind of getting a little bit hard to see the, the, the blackboard up front. And I, um, I didn't really understand why or any of that. Uh, I didn't know if that was normal or abnormal or what. I just, you know, I didn't know. Well, and it was sort of, it was a little gradual at first. And I don't remember a whole lot about that. I just remember having trouble seeing the board sometimes. Well, when I was in uh, fourth grade, um, that uh, that's when I really started having trouble with it. To the point where the teacher back then... I went to, a, I went to um, Overton Elementary School in Salisbury, North Carolina. This happened in Salisbury. And um, the, the, the teacher back then, <clears throat> the fourth grade teacher, she was not very, um, I don't think she understood what was going on either, but she was not very forgiving about it either. She was really, she was one of those tough, tough teachers. And she, she gave me a, a difficult time because I had trouble seeing the board and she would, I remember, I do remember her putting math problems on the board, things like that, and uh, having math tests and things. And because I couldn't see the board, I couldn't really write down stuff on my paper correctly because I couldn't see what was going on very well. And I would, um, I would get a lot of the answers wrong because I didn't write things down correctly to begin with. <clears throat> Instead of giving me a support or checking to see Hey, you know, maybe he's got a problem. Um, she gave me a hard time. She she really um, uh, chastised me a lot about it to the point where I, and so much so that I, I started to withdraw a little bit. And I couldn't see the board. I couldn't see anything that was going on at that point. So I just started drifting off and uh, because I didn't know what was going on anymore. Uh, and I'd, I'd be drifting off and, and uh, looking out the window or looking out anywhere else because I, I couldn't. I really couldn't see that well. And uh, the teacher just made things worse because what she would do is she would take the, uh, uh, actually, was it fourth grade or fifth grade? I don't remember now. It's a blur. Fourth or fifth grade. Anyway, she, uh, she started uh, making fun of me in the classroom in front of all the, the students. And if I would drift off or seemingly drift off because I couldn't really see what was going on, she would have the whole class <clears throat> get up and, and sing Beautiful Dreamer to me, saying that I was daydreaming in class. And call me Beautiful and, and have the whole class sing Beautiful Dreamer. I, I guess as a way to kind of shame me into, into paying attention and 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 um, getting back to work on, on the class studies, and it was uh, it was very it, it was kind of traumatic for me uh, as a kid because she uh, she did that and kind of turned the whole class against me. 
And uh, yeah, it, it started a little bit of bullying there in that sense. And uh, it made me very angry. It made me very uh, withdrawn. I just withdrew even more from the class. It, it had the opposite effect, I, I guess, of what she was trying to achieve because it just made me even more withdrawn. And uh, yeah, I remember going home distraught and you know crying and and uh, thinking the whole the whole world hated me. And I uh, couldn't really understand why. Because it wasn't so much that I was daydreaming, uh, I couldn't, uh, my, my eyesight was getting so bad that, that uh, I couldn't pay attention. I, I really didn't know, was, you know a lot of what was going on there. So finally, finally my parents figured it out. They sent me to a, I guess uh, somebody tipped them off and said, hey, you know what, I think he has trouble seeing. <laughs> So they took me to the eye doctor, and uh, the eye doctor said, yeah, his eyesight's pretty bad. Um, he needs glasses. So uh, once I got glasses, though, I, it was better. I was able to go back to school, and um, I think the next year I, I had a different teacher, and, and, and things got better. But the damage had already been done. The damage had already been done, and and, uh, and of course it was actually worse in a way because now I was wearing these thick, thick black glasses, and uh, that's that's uh, uh, where it really got fun, uh, <laughs> in, in the sense that uh, people back then people made fun of you, called you four eyes, and that sort of thing. The bully got worse in in many ways, and uh, when we moved to Florida. It, it it didn't get much better. It it was the same sort of thing uh, because we were in the South, and then the, you know the kids kids in the South those days they could be pretty tough. They could be pretty pretty brutal to other kids, and um, that was that was kind of tough for me. And uh, I withdrew a lot. I withdrew a lot from from people for that. But. Um, I had to really fight my way to, to out of that. It took a long time, but uh, but I managed to do it. So by the time I left high school, it was just like, man, I'm glad I'm done with that. Move on. Um, that's really where I was going from uh, with that in the beginning. And the reason I bring this up is because uh, it's kind of a, a, a tale of two siblings. <laughs> it's a tale of two siblings. My sister Gina, I always admired her, um, my younger sister, because um, she had, her eyesight wasn't that great either, and I think she wound up wearing glasses at some point as well, but she, it was kind of, it was a lot different with her. Um, for some reason, she was, well, she was able to make friends, and I know she worked kind of hard at it, but uh, she became rather popular. Uh, I, I saw her as the rather popular person in, in, in school and in high school and at church and, and everywhere else. She was, she was, she was very popular, and uh, she was kind of part of that in crowd. So here she had the, young, the older brother who was sort of the outcast, and here she was, um, you know, uh, the, the, the po- one of the popular ones, part of the, well, at least in my eye, she was the po- she was popular and part of the in crowd, and everybody loved her, um, and, and and liked her, and, um, I, I you know there's a lot of that I I didn't really understand a lot of that at the time, and it just made me more withdrawn in some ways, and then I tried various ways to sort of stand out and impress people. But it always seemed to backfire because I already had that reputation, and I didn't know how to do it. I did not have the cultural, social finesse to be able to 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 talk with people. I didn't really know how to talk to people. I didn't know how to present myself to people. So it came across as awkward. I was I was socially awkward, and uh, it just kind of made things worse in a lot of ways. But. I always admired my sister in the sense that, um, in, in some ways, I was a little envious of her that how she was able to do that and I couldn't. But in in more ways, uh, I was I was uh, inspired by her, 
and uh, and I and I always admired her for her ability to be able to make friends and to go out and and she seemed to have the social graces and she was articulate and she knew um, how how to to uh, how how to do that and uh, I it was something that I always sort of wished that that uh, I could have no I'm I'm pretty much burying my soul out here and then, but I'm doing that. Uh, on her birthday, out of love, because uh, once again, it's it's um, part of my admiration for my sister Jean. I've always looked up to her, even though I was the older brother. I always looked up to her, the younger sister. And even so, and you know, she she uh, moved to California, went to to college, and got married, had kids, and um, I saw their family life and. And I, I said to myself, that's something that I aspire to, but uh, it's, it's something that I always admired about her. And, uh, and, and it always, and it's one of the things that gave me inspiration to say, you know what, if my sister can do that, I can do that too. And I did, I did. I have a beautiful wife, I have two great kids, um, I've, I have a great career. I've, you know, I've I've moved on, moved up. I have friends. I've, you know, it's, I'm not winning. I'm not out to win a popularity contest by any means. But uh, you know, it's not like uh, it was when I was a kid. Um, but I feel that I owe a lot of my success in a way to the. Um, to the example that my sister set for me. And I just want to say that, Gina, I love you and I appreciate you and, uh, and happy birthday because, um, because I think that you're pretty awesome. And I'm going to have some more wine because it's good. This wine is very good. And... And Gina has joined us in the chat. Oh, great, Gina. And in case you missed it, I want to say happy birthday. And, uh, and here's to you again, now that you're here. You know, there's some other things I wanted to talk about, too. <laughs> Gina says, thanks, Rick. Oh, thanks, Rick. And you're welcome. You're quite welcome. Um, I hope I, I hope I didn't come across as too sappy or too sentimental. Uh, I re really, really didn't. But uh, yeah, I'm kind of one of those guys who were kind of wears his heart on his sleeve. And, and yeah, it, uh, my wife says I'm pretty sap. I'm a pretty sappy guy. So, that, but that's just me. Uh, I'm the kind of person I like to, you know, I'm I'm one of those huggers. I like to to run and and, and just uh, you know. Hug people, shake their hands. Hi, how you doing? That kind of thing, and it's um, it's something that's hard to do these days because in this politically correct society, you can't just go up and and hug people. And, and, and I'm not, I don't do that. I'm not that, you know. I don't, you know. I, I know, I, I know where the boundaries are, but. Uh, Gina says, uh, just moved out of my house. Much appreciate huggers. <laughs> and um, and I hope everything's going well for you, Gina. I, I know that, uh, that you've had a, a long month there uh, with, uh, with the, the, the move and everything like that. I hope you get settled into your new place shortly. And uh, I, by the way, did you, were you able to get the... the um, Package I sent you in time. I don't know if I I did see I, I did track it uh, again late this afternoon and it said it was in Arcadia, but I don't know if it got to you. Um, probably didn't. It's uh, being being a Saturday and all, but uh, it, it, the last I saw it was it wasn't going to get there till Tuesday. Even though they they told me that it was going to get there in time, uh, and I had my doubts because I was thinking, well, you know, they sent it FedEx ground and they couldn't send it. There was no way they could send it any faster. I tried, but there was no way they could could send it any faster. So um, FedEx ground was really all I had to work with. And uh, I would have sent it out sooner 
but it was a matter of uh, coordinating and getting a hold of you and and and, uh, and making sure that I could get this shipped out because I wasn't sure that that uh, they could ship it to your state, but um, but they could and they did, and uh, and they really went to bat for me to do it too. I, I really appreciate them them doing that. They did a they did a great job doing it. Anyway, um, I hope you're having a great birthday. And I'm not going to ask how old you are. If you want to volunteer, that's okay, but you don't have to. Uh, I I did tell everyone that you are, are younger than me, <clears throat> which is fortunate for you. <laughs> no matter how, it's like what she tells me. <clears throat> My wife, she, is that she says, you know, no matter how old I am, you're always going to be older than me. And I'm thinking, well, that's that's nice. <laughs> that's <laughs> she knows how to make a guy feel. Feel great, you know. <laughs> this is good wine, by the way. In case um, you're coming in late, anyone else coming in late, this is um, <clears throat> Jeff Runquist 1448 Red Blend, and this was recommended to me at wine store. This is a 2016 vintage, and it has a combination of uh, Petit Syrah and... Um, Let's see what is it. I forgot what's what all is in it now. I, I wrote it. And I had it down here somewhere, but it has yeah. It has a petit Syrah, It has a, a petit verdot, uh, a little bit of Zinfandel, and then a combination of about three or four other different grapes, other wines uh, like a Malbec, a Tempranillo, um, a Boucher. Uh, you know, they're they're like a number of. Basically, what they did was they took pretty much whatever they had left over and just kind of mix it all together. But apparently they took some thought into it because there are a lot of, as I mentioned so many times before, there are a lot of red blends that I don't like that just give me a headache and that uh, I, I don't care for. They don't taste very good. But there are a few red blends that, <clears throat> there are a few red blends that I can tell that they put a little bit of forethought into and, and put and, and mix them up well. And this is one that apparently they they did they they uh, this is a combination that definitely uh, definitely works, and it has I have in here so far tasted some cherry, uh, some blackberry. I, I've I've tasted some tones of vanilla, um, and it, it's a little oaky, not not bad. A few tannins, it's not bad. It's it's good. It's 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 okay. Uh, it's full bodied. It's a full bodied red, and it's. Um, I, w I would have to say it goes great with steak. And then, and I don't think I'm going to have anything left in the bottle because I've, I've had over half the bottle already. And uh, but I, I will say that uh, that is, is definitely good steak wine. And I think that I will probably pick up another bottle. I don't know if I'm going to pick it up in time for for doing grilling on Memorial Day because I plan to go out there and fire up the grill uh, Memorial Day and, and, and do some serious grilling. But uh, I would say that it is a, a good wine for that. It, it really is. It's also, I think it's good. Uh, you know, I think it's a, it's a good kind of romantic date wine. You know, if you're, if you're going to have a romantic evening with, with, uh, with your significant other, uh, by the fireplace or something. I think this is a good, good maybe after dinner wine too. I think it goes pretty well. It's also an excellent wine for a Saturday night wine stream, which is one reason why I'm doing this tonight and not the the Frico wine. And we already went through the the whole Frico thing, but. It, it's it's uh, very good. I like it. I, I really like this wine, and I do recommend this. I give this one two thumbs up, way up. Uh, not to steal uh, a trademark from anyone else, but it it definitely gets uh, it gets my vote. Uh, I really really enjoy this wine, and you know what? This is two winners in a row because last week, of course, we did the. Le Mistral, and 
I really like that wine too. In fact, I like that wine so much, I wanted to make sure, I was concerned that they were going to run out of it over there in the wine store before I had a chance to pick up another bottle. But I did pick up another bottle of that, and I've got it, and I'm saving that. I'm saving that one for, uh, for a very special occasion, uh, whatever it may be. That is definitely a $50 bottle of wine, and it goes for about $45 to $50 a bottle. Um, I got it for about $20, uh, in, which I thought was a phenomenal deal. I thought it was a fabulous deal for this wine. It's definitely worth it. Definitely, and the one next to it is one that's going to go down there next to the Charles Shaw and everything else. Uh, at some point, that Gran Paso, that, yeah, that was the one we did a couple weeks before. And if you missed that, you didn't miss much because it was it was not great. I, I did not I did not enjoy that one at all, really. And uh, we had a neighbor over the next day because I, I couldn't I couldn't do that whole bottle. Um, we had a neighbor over the next day, and I, I gave her some to try, and she agreed with me. It was it was it was not good. So I don't know if it was just that bottle or if it was just I don't know. It just it, it wasn't that great. Didn't enjoy it. Um, and, and, if, and I picked that up at, uh, in fact, I found the card for it. I picked it up at, uh, when we went to Blowing Rock. We went to Blowing Rock a couple of weeks ago. And um, this was blowingrockwine.com. I think it's called Sunset Vine. And uh, Sharon over there, she was really nice. Uh, she recommended that, and she recommended the Brick Mason, which I, since I've opened this one up, I didn't try either one of these. She just recommended them to me, and uh, bless her heart. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure she liked the wines. I'm sure people up there in Blowing Rock like these wines. I did not like this wine. Um, the Brick Mason I have not opened up yet. I've thought about it, but I haven't not done it because uh, for two reasons. One, uh, every week... I get something else, I find something else that I'd really rather open up more, like this one, and uh, like the uh, La Mistral. And the second reason is because that because I had such a negative experience with that one, I've been hesitant to open up that bottle. But I don't know, I, I'm sure it's probably fine wine, That's an, I think that's a Napa Valley wine, so it's probably okay, but it's not... This thing, I don't, don't, I don't recommend uh, Gran Paso, uh, to be honest. I mean, it's not my taste. It might be yours. It might, it's, it's not mine. Go back. If, if you're not sure, if you'd like to try it, go back and look at the wine stream. That was from a couple of weeks ago, and uh, you can look over that wine tasting. This one, though, I can highly recommend. Mm. Definitely a good wine, 1448. Gina, I should have sent you a bottle of this one, but I did not know about this one yet. At the time that I sent... Oh, I'm spilling some here. Uh, at the time that, that I... that, that uh, uh, I spoiled your surprise, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, but I, I, I feel you should know anyway. You're going to find out anyway. But... Uh, I sent you a couple of nice bottles um, that I really enjoyed, and I think that you will really enjoy. Let me know. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of them. There is something that I forgot to put in the package. I'm going to have to send this over separately. I'm not going to show you what it is. A couple of small things, but um, I picked those up in Blowing Rock, and I was going to send those along with the wine, but I forgot to, to include them in there, so I'll send those off to you in a separate package. And then we'll tell everybody what it is later. Um, something else I picked up, and I showed this before while I was in Blowing Rock, um, was this. This is a wine bar. Yeah, I bought a wine bar. I, I bought a wine bar, yeah. Uh, this is Chardonnay. It's a Chardonnay. What this is, is this is white chocolate, supposedly. I haven't opened it up yet. I was actually planning to open it, and in fact, we can do it now because Gina is here. And I was saving this for our May 25th uh, birthday uh, celebration for my sister. 
Kind of like, you know, I don't have a cake, but hey, I've got a wine bar. Um, that's better than a cake, isn't it? Having a wine bar. Um, this is a Chardonnay. And I, I have to open this thing up anyway because it doesn't keep forever. It's going to go bad at some point. This is $5.99, $6 for this bar of white chocolate. And uh, it's supposed to taste like Chardonnay wine. And, and I'm going to read this. Traditional European white chocolate paired with a blend of classic wine flavors that have stood the test of time. This wine bar creates a true synergy between the wine and deep, rich, dark chocolate in both flavor and texture that make this bar slightly sinful. Um, and it's uh, made for sunset teas and hattery. That's where we went. Well, went, went there, and uh, it was. It's an interesting place. You've never been to Blowing Rock. It's a very quaint town. I love this town. We go there. We try to go there about once a year or so, whenever we can. And we sometimes we stay the weekend, which is what we did this this time actually. The reason that we we did, and if you missed the wine stream from a couple of weeks ago. Um, uh, Tommy was interested, my son Tommy was interested in, uh, you know, I'm going to throw this up again here too before I forget. There we go, Gina. Happy birthday. Uh, there, um, we, we went up there a couple weeks ago because my son Tommy, uh, was, uh, he's, he's going to college now, but he was interested in, in, uh, going up to, um, uh, Appalachian, Appalachian University up in Blo uh, up in Boone, and it's a very nice, beautiful campus, wonderful university. And we toured, we we got a grand tour. And as a matter of fact, uh, a friend of his, a childhood friend of his, um, uh, gave us a tour of the entire university, and we were really, really impressed with it. It was really great, really impressed with it, and we stayed there for. Uh, because the next day uh, was was free comic book day. It was also May the Fourth, you know, Star Wars Day. May the Fourth be with you and all that. Um, so we were. It was kind of a, a, a twofer there. And uh, Tommy doing his Cube Command podcast with his friend Nick. His friend Nick was with us, and uh, we decided to do some podcasting there. We decided to podcast live from. Uh, the university and the 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 uh, folks at the university bookstore were so nice to us. They were they were just great. Um, they set us up with a nice booth and a nice area. They provided equipment for us because we didn't bring any podcasting equipment with us at the time. And we did uh, an episode of our free stuff show there. Tommy and Nick did uh, an episode of his Cube Command podcast. And we just had a great time. It was just a phenomenal time, and uh, uh, it, was, it was just a wonderful experience. But uh, while we were there, we went, we toured around Blowing Rock as we often do. Whenever we go up there, uh, we, we love Blowing Rock. The the Hattery is, um, if you've never been there, the shops, the in in Main Street downtown there, uh, they have a, a lot of nice little quaint shops. They, by the way, they're they're very big on wines. There, they they have a couple of wine places, and it is very very much a wine snob town. Uh, and I mean that in in not in a derogatory sense at all. I I mean that in 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 uh, in a complimentary sense. They everybody there is into wine, and they do a lot of wine celebrations. They'll do a lot of uh, uh, wine tastings and uh, uh, things going on uh, over there, and uh, I tell you what, some of the mountain folk—they really—they know how to party. I'll say that. They know how to party. Anyway, they—they—they they, um, they have a lot of culture up there, so they do a lot of wine tastings and a, wine, a lot of wine celebrations and get-togethers. And uh, they had one the next day, but we couldn't stay. We weren't able to stay for that. Uh, we had to be back here in Charlotte uh, by the afternoon, so we missed that. And plus, it was it was pouring rain then, so it was. Uh, I I hope they didn't get rained out. But they probably did. Uh, it was. Uh, 
it was a, a little shop down there on the side streets that they had a lot of this tasting going on. And that's where I picked up these two bottles. Now where I picked this up was uh, the, the Hattery shop. The, um, what is it called? I never can remember the name of that place. We've been there so many times. Sunset Teas and Hattery. The Hattery place is on the top, uh, on, on, you know, the ground floor on the top. And then there's a basement. You can walk downstairs and they have um, a candy store down there, which is pretty awesome. I mean, they've got a lot of candies that, you know, stuff I haven't seen since I was a kid. And uh, some of my favorite candies when I was a kid. And it just it's just amazing. And they also do some tastings for um, um, hot sauces. They, they, they have... Um, their uh, their hot sauces down there, and you can you can go down there and do tastings for that. And they have an, uh, they have ice cream and things like that downstairs. But that's where I picked up this this uh, wine bar, this Chardonnay wine bar. Now, supposedly, this is white chocolate. That's what it says it is. But then in this next sentence, you're, I'm going to read this again because this is a little bit a little bit odd. Traditional European white chocolate paired with a blend of classic wine flavors that have stood the test of time. That's the first sentence. Here's the second sentence. This wine bar creates a, this wine bar creates a true synergy between the wine and deep, rich, dark chocolate in both flavor and texture that make this bar slightly sinful. Okay, now I'm really curious about, oh, we're going to open this. I'm really curious about what's in this package. Is it because the first sentence they say it's white chocolate, the second sentence says deep, rich, dark chocolate. So which is it? Is it white chocolate or dark chocolate? I don't know. So we're going to try this. And you know what? Chocolate goes good with wine. Some wines. Now, I don't know about this one, but some wines, it goes actually pretty good. Uh, chocolate and wine. Chocolate and wine is a pretty decent combination in some... some uh, situation. So we're going to find out about this one. What we're going to open, in honor of my sister Gina's birthday, since I don't have a cake, we're going to open, I still have the happy birthday thing up there. I should just leave it up there. Let me just leave, I'm just going to leave that up there. Uh, well, okay, let me take this down for just a minute because I'm, I don't want to embarrass my sister. <laughs> I know that I have embarrassed you enough over the years, uh, especially when we were kids. I'm sure I've embarrassed you enough. Uh, I don't want to overdo this. Uh, I probably already have. Okay, I, this, I'm not sure how to open this, but I want to use my teeth. I've already been to the dentist once last month, and it was... Uh, uh, I've got to go back again, and uh, I don't want to have to go back for a chip tooth, so let's see if I can find another way to open this. Surely there's a way to open this bar. I don't have a pair of... No, I'm not putting up the hamburger this time. I'm, I'm not going to do the hamburger thing this time. It, traditionally what happens is if I forget my wine glass and I have to go downstairs and get my wine glass, I'll throw up a photo of a, of a hamburger while I'm gone. <laughs> to give everybody something to look at, but uh, I could go run over there and grab my scissors across the studio. I have, uh, on the other side of the studio, I have uh, a pair of scissors I can use, but uh, I'm not going to do that. Well, maybe I might, <laughs> if I can't get this bar open. There's got to be a way to open this thing. What is it? Uh, huh. Well, this is fun. All right. Well, they didn't make it easy. Oh, you know, it's funny. I can smell the chocolate, so it must have made a break somewhere. Maybe I made a, a micro break somewhere in uh, in this package. Okay. Uh, don't ask what I'm doing, folks. Come on. Uh, all right, that it, it wouldn't open. Okay, so I'm going to have to be forced to go grab the scissors. I don't want to do that. Okay, let me lose my teeth.
Don't tell my dentist, please. Uh, okay, so it is... Look at that, folks. It is white chocolate. This wine bar Chardonnay is white chocolate. Unless it's white on the outside and, and deep charcoal on the inside. No. Okay, and that smells nice. And look at that. It's white chocolate all the way through. Now, is it white chocolate because it's supposed to be Chardonnay? And, uh, and of course, Chardonnay... You know, you think of a Chardonnay as a, a white, it is, it's a white wine. Chardonnay is a, a white, Chardonnay is a white, buttery kind of wine. Very, kind of a buttery uh, uh, flavor to wine. And um, a good Chardonnay is, anyway. Let's find out if this tastes like Chardonnay. This should be good. Hmm. Okay, it's not bad. It's not. I mean, it's, it's not bad. It's, it tastes interesting. I like it. Hmm. It tastes like white chocolate. Okay. I've had four bites of this. And so far, I taste a lot of white chocolate. But I can't say that I taste any Chardonnay. I know what a Chardonnay tastes like. I've had quite a bit of it in my lifetime. Um, and it's not my favorite wine, by the way. It's okay. I'll drink a Chardonnay. I prefer the reds. But if, if, if white is all there is, if there's going to be a white, I prefer either a Pinot Grigio or, or a Chardonnay. I'm not particularly fond of, of some of the other whites, but... Uh, Chardonnay is one that I, I will drink. Um, see if it goes good with this wine. Actually, you know what? This is really strange, but... Um, it's not... <laughs> It doesn't taste bad with the wine, to be honest. And that I'm telling you, that's it's it's odd. It's really strange, but it's um, it doesn't taste it doesn't taste bad with the wine. Now I'll be on a sugar rush because you know all the all the wine converts to sugar, and then this thing, uh, however much sugar, how much sugar is in here, by the way. Uh, I can tell you what's in it. You know, let's read the ingredients. We have white chocolate, no big surprise there, sugar, which is the second ingredient in there, so that's, uh, oh, oh, that's in parentheses, so that's what the white chocolate consists of. Sugar, vegetable oil, whey, cocoa, nonfat milk, mono and diglycerides, sunflower and or soya lecithin, sunflower and or soya lecithin, hmm, okay. Artificial color, titanium dioxide. I don't know if that. I don't know how bad that is for you. It can't be good. Titanium dioxide, natural and artificial flavors, and vanilla, and vanilla, raspberries. Raspberries? There are raspberries in this thing. Who knew? <laughs> raspberries, white chocolate, and raspberries. Okay. Sugar. Pectin, sugar's in there twice. Sugar and sugar. Sugar is in, in you know sugar sugar comma, so it's not like sugar pectin. It's sugar and pectin. Dextrose, 
that's in parentheses, pectin dextrose, which is more sugar, dextrose, sugar. Corn syrup, which is basically more sugar, high fructose corn syrup, which is more sugar, which is bad sugar, that's, that's bad for you, uh, high fructose corn syrup. You don't really, you're not really supposed to eat stuff with high fructose corn syrup. There's so much stuff out there that has high fructose corn syrup in it, but really, it, it, it's really bad for you, actually, um, in my opinion. And in the opinion of a lot of other dietitians, well, I'm not a dietitian, but in the opinion of a lot of the dietitians out there, it is, is bad for you. Uh, so we have fructose corn syrup, vanilla, or oh, high fructose corn syrup, vanilla, and salt. So we got we got the salt in there somewhere. Cream, butter, uh, which uh, consists of milk and salt, but we knew that because butter usually has milk and salt in it. So we have ingredients: white chocolate, which is sugar, vegetable oils, whey, cocoa, non-fat milk, mono and diglyceride, sunflower and/or soy lecithin, artificial color, titanium dioxide, natural and artificial flavors, and vanilla, raspberry, sugar, pectin, dextrose, corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup, vanilla, salt, cream, butter, milk, and salt. That's sugar, 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 sugar. And I better put this down right now because that's just way too much sugar. And I'm not even supposed to be eating all this sugar. I've been trying to lose weight. That's why I'm not losing weight because I'm eating crap like this. And guess what, folks? Guess what? This wine bar, this Chardonnay, this wine bar, this Chardonnay wine bar from, from Blowing Rock, which is, by the way, it says down at the bottom in little small type, Private Reserve private reserve. It sounds like a wine, right? The private reserve, which I'll have some more of. This wine bar, get ready for it, does not contain alcohol. The Chardonnay wine bar, and there's no Chardonnay. So, it does contain milk and soy, but we knew that, we knew that from the get-go. You have to figure that if it's a, it's a, if it's a block of white chocolate. But it does not contain alcohol. No alcohol, zero, none, not a zilch, uh, not a bit of alcohol, and it's a Chardonnay in name only. So there you go. There's the Chardonnay wine bar. That's for. Uh, I, Gina, I should have sent you one of these. That just that would have been fun uh, for your birthday and put a candle on it or something. I don't know. Um, that it would have been it would have been fun. Yeah, yeah. you don't want to eat this stuff. Um, I shouldn't, and I got a whole bar to eat, and I you know I spent six bucks on it, so five ninety nine plus tax, whatever the tax is. Uh, well, actually, it's, you know what it says? It says five ninety six. No, it's five ninety six or five ninety eight. It's it's six bucks. Spend six bucks on a bar of Chardonnay that's not Chardonnay, and that's mostly sugar, 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 and sugar plus artificial sugar and more sugar. So, um, lesson learned. Anyway, Chi has joined us in the chat, my lovely wife Chi. Hi Chi, how you doing? And um, I'm hope you I, 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 I'll be with you shortly um, because I think this wine stream has kind of probably run its course for the evening. Uh, I don't know if Gina's still with us, but I hope you're enjoying it. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Wait a minute. So, uh, what, what time we start this? 11, 12, 30? Yeah, it's about time, probably. I really, to be honest, I really hate to shut these streams down at the at the end of the evening. I, I hate to close these things. That's why the last one ran so long. It, it, it ran almost two hours. Because I really enjoy doing this. I have gone on a kid. This was actually just a one-time, it was intended as a one-time experiment in, in tasting a wine. 
and it's turned into a three-month tour. A three-month tour. Uh, it's turned into. Uh, it's it's it, I've I've developed a passion for this wine stream. It's it's been a lot of fun. I enjoy it. As I said before, when it stops being fun, I'll stop doing it. But for right now, I'm having a great time. I hope you're having a great time. You're watching this now or later, whenever you're watching it. And I know I ramble on a lot. And I've probably uh, provided a lot more of my personal life than I probably should have. But this has been an experiment in, in, in streaming and... Uh, and as long as I enjoy doing it, I'll keep doing it. And when it stops being fun, I'll stop doing the stream. But for right now, it's it's I'm, I'm having a good time. And you know what? Maybe I am making uh, maybe I am making a fool of myself uh, in front of tens of people. <laughs> I don't know who's watching this thing now, but. Uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's just me. And I don't care. I'm not here to, and once again, when I was a kid, I was, I was concerned about popularity, as a lot of kids are. In terms of, uh, in terms, of, and I, I really wasn't, I didn't want to be popular. I just wanted to be accepted. That's all. I just wanted to be accepted. But as I've grown older, and and I don't know, I can't say I'm any wiser, but uh, because I've made a lot of mistakes throughout my life. But as I've grown older, and learned a lot of things about life, and I continue to learn things every day. As I've grown older, I've uh, learned that none of that stuff's important. Is it really isn't? the The things that are important is to live your life, to be good to other people, to, you know, to, to fulfill your, your destiny. And, and once again, I, I don't get into politics and religion stuff, so I'm not going to go into all that stuff, but whatever your, you feel your destiny is. But mostly to just love each other. And I mean that in the sense of, of loving one another, love your enemies, love your friends, um, you know, be be true to yourself, be but be true to other people, be true to your, be true to your spouses, be true to your your families, um, and and just just take good care of each other, just be good to each other, as Bill and Ted would say. You know, be excellent to each other. We don't have enough of that in this world. And I think we have less of it now than, than ever before, really. I mean, I, I know that, that throughout our history, as mankind, we've, it's been a very tumultuous journey. But, and it seems like sometimes it's been very dark, some darker than others. But I think we're kind of going through a dark time now where you, you look around and you see, at least in this country, where you see so many people that are so polarized and, and you've seen that a lot of love has been lost between friends, between families, between relatives, between uh, countries, whole countries. And I don't think that was... I don't think that was what was intended in the first place. I don't. I don't think that's what what life is supposed to be. I don't think that's what life is supposed to be about at all. And I think if we can do whatever we can to bring more people together, uh, I think that's a good thing. I think wine can bring people together used in um, moderation and used in, in, in uh, oh, listen to me, 
I'm sitting here closing this out and I'm drinking through this. Um, but this is good wine. <laughs> um, but yeah, wine can bring people together. And I think, uh, in any case, a good meal. And what you know, in throughout history, oftentimes that's what's brought people together is is a good meal, and fine wine, to bring to bring enemies and adversaries to the table, to to share a meal, to enjoy a meal, and uh, and, and enjoy a fine uh, wine and, and other libations and and to to um, uh, enjoy each other's company and leave friends instead of en as enemies and um, I think I think we've lost a lot of that um, that 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 sense of, of civility throughout the throughout the uh, uh, through the last few years, especially, we've lost that sense of civility with each other, especially in this country, in the United States, where we're supposed to be united, we're supposed to be a one people, um, no matter what your culture is, your background, your religion, your your um, the political view, your um, your cultural view. We're all supposed to be one country, one people, united together with one one um, common purpose, and that is um, uh, freedom and the uh, the love for freedom and the love for countrymen, the f love for family and the love for individuals, one another. And when you start to lose that, I think that that you start to lose. Your identity. Uh, I think you start to lose your, 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 your. You know, you lose your morality. You lose your, your ethics. You lose. Um, I think you lose yourself. So, I think what I'm trying to say here is that uh, uh, instead of trying to. Instead of trying to be instead of trying to be um, divisive, I think we should really try to to find more common ground to to do things that are uh, and, and to to behave in a way and to treat other people with some more respect and to to be to really try to be good to each other um, my fear for this country and for this world is that uh, that we're going to tear ourselves apart we're going to tear ourselves apart as a nation we're going to tear ourselves apart as as a world um, but it doesn't have to be that way. It, it's a. I think that if you can find a common purpose, if you can find um, the good in each other, you can find, especially if you can just find the good in each other, you can um, you can find a way to to um, to bond and to be, you know, to to really. I don't know. I, I'm just I'm just concerned with how things are going. I've seen so much discord lately that it really really bothers me. And um, I really would like to see everyone, especially as we're streaming on Facebook. I'd like to see everyone talk to each other and not at each other. And I think for this Memorial Day. As I close here on this wine stream, uh, and of course it's my sister's birthday, and um, and trying to bring this around for a full circle, 
Um, as I was talking before about the disparity between uh, the ostracization, the uh, um, ostra. Ostrac uh, you know the the ostracizing that uh, I experienced when I was a kid and my sister's popularity uh, you know that, that happened within with two people in the same family um, and the uh, I forgot where I was going with this <laughs> the wine's kicking in uh and the, uh, the fact that we're approaching Memorial Day, where we're uh, supposed to be observing a time when where we're observing those who lost their lives for our country to preserve our way of life and to preserve freedom and to preserve, uh, basically to protect all of us living today. And how a lot of us have forgotten that and are really busy more, uh, really more concerned about what we're going to do for the holiday and the cookouts and the Memorial Day sales and that sort of thing than really reflecting on the sacrifices that these people made. And I think that um, to bring this all full circle, I think that what it comes down to is if we're we're all thinking about each other instead of thinking about ourselves, thinking about those who've lost their lives for us, um, instead of thinking about our, uh, you know, what we're doing, what we're having, what we're enjoying on this day. I think that it will maybe bring us all a little bit closer together. If we're all united in that sense, uh, I think it could bring us all together, uh, closer together as a, as a country, as a family, as a country, as a world. I think that's really what I'm trying to say. Anyway, I'm rambling on. Of course, the wine is kicking in. Of course, uh, I think for those of you, of you who wanted to just see me get drunk and make a fool of myself, I think I'm probably already there. But man, this is good wine. Once again, this is uh, 1448. This is California Red Table Wine uh, from uh, Jeff Runquist. And uh, I highly recommend this wine. It goes from between $15 to $20 a bottle. I got it for $15. You can get it for $15 at the wine store. At wine store, uh, what is that? Uh, wine store dash online.com. You can also get it, I think, at the Total Wine, totalwine.com. You can pick it up a couple of other places, I think. Um, I don't know who else has it. I think uh, probably you can get it directly from Jeff uh, RunquistWines.com. Uh, I think uh, Vino.com did something on it. And uh, Wine.com, I think you get a, uh, you, you, they have some information on it there. Anyway, uh, it's getting late, and I've had too much of this already, as you can tell. But uh, it was a very enjoyable wine. And I hope you enjoyed this wine stream. Sorry for rambling on so much. But uh, no, I'm not. Yeah, I had a great time. Anyway, uh, I hate to hit this stop button, but I'm going to have to do it. And uh, I'll see you all next week. We will try. I'll tell you what we'll do. I think we'll try. We'll open up the Frico wine. Uh, unless I find something else. As I always say, unless I find something else, and I might, if I find something else better, then I'll open that. But unless I find something else, I will open up the Frico wine, and we will try that that out and see how it is. I know my wife bought a bottle of Chianti that I am interested in trying out, but uh, I don't know if I'm going to do it on the wine stream. I might just have that instead for, the, uh, for Memorial Day. But... Uh, 
we're going to try something. In any case, it's going to be, hopefully it'll be good. And uh, I'll see you all next week on the Saturday Night Wine Stream. And we'll all get together and drink with Rick. Good night, everybody.